All right, so in Moncton, who are your buddies? Greg Garland was my next door neighbor. He was a good buddy. Bud Maynard, who lived on, uh, they both lived on Killam Drive, which is not far from the rink. Um, the Phillips boys, David, especially with Henry and Bobby, and then there was uh, John McWilliams. Um, they were my my friends in 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 where we lived up in uh, Metcalf Street near the high school near Harrison Trimble High School. But before that, we had lived down Bromley Avenue, and I did. Is Harrison Trimble the the big uh, brick school that's just sitting in the middle of Mountain Road? Uh, it's it's off Mountain Road somewhat, but oh. not too far. And I went to Queen Elizabeth School there. Uh, I never went to Harrison Triple because I was only grade, going to grade seven when we moved. So. And were there, are these friends of yours, do you know if they're still alive? Uh, I think Bud's still alive. Um, and he lives in London, Ontario. Uh, he worked for, um, was, what was the Ford? He worked for Ford Motor Company, was a union guy. Do you think your life would have been different had you uh, stuck around in Moncton and just uh... maybe maybe my dad didn't my dad thought that the fellows I was hanging out with probably not going to university and wanted me to hang out with people that were but were these well, guys that you went to school with do you think that they would have been like Aaron and Carlin or like friends that you would have had forever if you had a state oh they weren't no they were kind of like Aaron Carlin and Arthur Kalin I guess you know um you know, I used to um, play ball all day long in the summer. We, you know, we'd be outdoors all day, play baseball, uh, pick up baseball in, in the empty lot, like play scrub and stuff like that where everybody gets turned to bat, you know. And uh, in the wintertime, played a little hockey, but I didn't play a whole lot of hockey there. Played some basketball in grade six at school, but... Um, most of the fun we made was our own fun. Like, uh, Did you find it sad every time you had to move? Yeah, and the television was new, so we didn't have a TV for a long time. I used to go to the next door neighbors to watch watch television until I kind of wore out my welcome. My mother used to warn me, you're going to go over there, you're going to wear out your welcome, and I guess I did. You know. When you left Moncton, were your friends sad? Yeah, I think they, I think so, yeah. Like, um, do you remember? Greg, Greg told me he remembered the day that I moved, and I, that was thirty years later when I when I looked him up. So he he remembered the day I moved. So my dad used to do stuff with the kids. He wasn't much with baseball. He played a little baseball with us, but he would he used to teach us how to box. And Greg remembered that my dad taught me and the other kids how to box. And he liked boxing. Was Greg your best friend? Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, he was. Um, I would say probably was. Yeah, I was over. He lived right next door to me. I'd be over there a lot. We'd uh, we go raiding people's apple apple orchards and steal apples. And did you ever meet his knock aunt? Knock on doors, and then we go back to his place and eat the apples, put salt on them, and eat them, and, and play darts. You know? Salt. Did you meet his aunt Judy? Yeah, Judy Garland. It's not his aunt. Oh. Not his aunt either. Well, she used to work for, um, what's that guy, that Russian Jew that uh, was from St. John, New Brunswick. Oh, Louis B. Meyer. <coughs> so, Met Metro Goldwyn Meyer. So there's a connection there. Could be. I don't know. She's not from New Brunswick, so I don't know. He, he's from New Brunswick. So did, um, did um, do you remember, like, your friend saying bye to you? At the end of when you left Moncton, um, I don't specifically remember it, but I think they, I'm pretty sure they did. Um, you don't specifically remember. Well, they all lived really close to me. Like Greg lived right, literally next door. He was on Killam Drive. On I was on Metcalf Street, but Bud lived across from Greg. Almost. And so were you all like the South Park gang at school? Yeah, some, somewhat. Well, they, yeah, but Greg was in a he was a, a, a grade before me, and Bud went to a different school because he lived on the other side of Killam Drive. Oh. So he went to Parkland School. So we didn't go to school together. Did Huey know those guys? Oh, yeah. Was Huey friends with them? Well, he was in a younger group. Uh, you know, he wasn't really friends with them, no. He had Did... a younger... Uh, he was uh, three three grades behind <coughs> He was three grades behind me. Was uh, was Huey a ladies' man when he was in grade four? Mm, well, they always liked Huey, yeah. 
you know, he cute little fella who, who wouldn't like you, you know, he's a kid too. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So when you moved to Toronto, um, Toronto. how did that go? Who was your best friend in Toronto? <laughs> Jerry Canetta. Oh, jeez. Uh, he was this kid in front of me in class, and uh, I didn't know anybody. I was new, and a lot of them were, were immigrants. And I remember poking Jerry with my pen, and he turned around and said, want to die? And after that, we became good friends. And he, used to, he used to deliver the Globe and Mail in the morning, and I would uh, help him collect. He would go around collecting for what they owed him, and I'd go around with him and he'd take the money and then he, we'd go to this delicatessen and buy Brio, which was an Italian dr soft drink that uh, we both used to like and we'd drink it, you know, that'd be a big, big night out, you know, collecting for the newspaper. So how many years were you in Toronto? Well, I was in Toronto till 1962 in the fall, so five right years? to the end of grade 11, so that was... Five years? Yeah five years and then came back to Toronto after I graduated from university and lived there a few more did years. you hang out with Jerry Canetta then too I looked him up uh, he, he looked me up when I was in Montreal uh, you know we'd not see each other for a few years and then I'd uh, so I'd, I'd hear from him or he'd did, show up at the door did know. he have a rule he can't touch my sister <laughs> I think he was a little t pissed that I dated his sister but um, she was nice you know so when you were friends with him, did you know her before you dated her? Well, I used to go to his house, and she was like in grade, when I was in grade seven, she would have been in grade five, and I, I had a memory of her as being kind of cute, but I never, you know, I, I was not kind of go there, but year, years later, when I came back after graduate university, I thought I'd, well, I should go see Jerry, and uh, you know, then I thought, well, gee, I wonder what his sister looks like today. She was kind of cute in those days, and uh, she was cute, so I So J her Jerry Canetta, when he was younger, was anti-Semitic, and then he grew up to be a a, a defender of uh, the the Jewish the Jewish religion or race. Yeah, he he was like that. There was a lot of that that in the classroom. I I don't know why there was um, a neighborhood that had been a Jewish neighborhood that was transitioning over to you know, other, you know, uh, wasps and uh, also a lot of immigrants like Italians and that and, and people from mm. Britain. Jerry was such a Scottish, his ancestry was Italian, but he was from Scotland and he spoke with a Scottish accent and his dad had such a thick accent. He, he had a Scottish him. accent? Oh yeah. He's still got a bit of it. <coughs> still here for But people think he's Italian because of his name. Well, he's of Italian ancestry, but he's not, he's born in his uh, second or third generation Scottish and now Canadian. You know. Was Huey friends with all your friends? No, you always hang out with different guys. Younger. Was, was there anybody that Huey, that was a friend of yours that Huey didn't like? No, I can't think of anybody. Um, no, he, I hang out with Jerry and then Ron, Ron, Ron Sharawara. He and I used to play a lot of baseball together. And, you know, uh, he was a pretty good friend. He was in my class. He's a, a Polish kid. Uh, he lived right next to the Black Diamond Riders. They were the big motorcycle gang in Toronto. He used to get a kick out of watching these guys come and go. You know, uh, I, I guess those in in when we first lived at Oak, Oakwood in St. Clair, and I went to McMurray Public School. Those were the two guys I hung out with. But I was only there a year. You know. Where was that? Toronto. Yeah, in Toronto. Yeah, Oakwood in St. Clair. I got a question about Huey. Yeah. Was Huey, when he was a kid, was he a lot like Huey as an adult? Like, was uh, it? Yeah. Like, yeah. he's in a lot of ways, was he like still Huey? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very similar. As an adult, obviously, you're going to see things differently, but you know, I know he's basically the same guy. Granny, the same person? Yeah. Granny, the same when she was younger as she was when she got older? Yeah. Yeah. And did, did you feel weird to have Grampy gone for so many years when Granny and Huey were still here? Mm, well, you know, when your mother is 99.9 .9 years old, um, you know, you, you can't expect her to stick around much longer. You know, so. She'd be like 108 now. Yeah. 
Did you miss Granny? Yep. You, um, so when did you move from Toronto? 1967? Well, yeah, I, we moved to Asian Court, which is outside Toronto. It's part of Metropolitan Toronto. And what went, year? Uh, that would have been 58. Uh, and I went uh, from grade 8 to grade 11 in Asian Court, um, oh. right in on Emmeline Crescent, which is off Midland, near Midland and Shepherd. Now, was there a lot of Asians there? No, not at the time, no. So it's called Asian Court. It's a, it's if you want a good Chinese dinner, that's where you go. There's yeah, there's a lot but of it's Asians called, there now. It's called Asian. And a lot of high rise. It's parties. called Asian Court. Yeah, but back in those but days, like a country. As town. a joke, you could call it Asian Court. Yeah, I get the joke. Okay, so when did Healy meet Clay? Is that in Toronto or, or Asian? Yeah, Court? I've been in Toronto probably. Um, well, I was in grade. I was in grade uh, eight there. Healy would have been grade five, so he would have met Clay in grade five. Do you think that yeah, um, best friends right till the end? Yeah. Do you think all your traveling and living and meeting new people helped you in life? Yeah, yeah. I think moving around did give me some perspective. Yeah, I lived in four different provinces. Yeah. And like, was it different mentalities and stuff? Like going from Moncton to Toronto? Oh yeah, yeah. People in Toronto had a bit of a superiority attitude towards the Americans. And, my dad warned me about it, and I think maybe I was looking for it all the time because he had told me about it. My dad had this thing about it on Toronto. But do you think that thinking they were pretty good? Do you yeah. think it's that they feel superior, or do you think it's because they're a little bit? Um, there's a lot of people in Toronto, from my experience, that are kind of like, what's the word? Um, they're kind of closeted from reality a bit. You like, think they're the center of the universe. Isn't it? Well, no. They, they're they kind of... Like, their parents are all rich, and the kids don't really have to amount to anything. They just have to kind of... They're sheltered. Like, yeah. I think it's more of a sheltered attitude. Well, there's that. They don't know anything about the rest of Canada. No. Like, you go to Calgary, or you go to BC, or you go anywhere in the Maritimes, and people are a bit, you know... Yeah, but then you go to like anywhere in Ontario, people. Yeah, it's a bit snobby, but at the same time, it's a bit kind of like they don't know how to interact with humans. Yeah, yeah, it's some of that. <coughs> I notice that every time we go to Toronto. Um, I didn't like Toronto that much, to tell you the truth, when I first lived there. Yeah. And did it make you hate the Toronto Maple Leafs living there? Well, yeah. I was a New York Ranger fan. and Until every, when? Up until uh, I changed my mind. Uh, every Saturday night, uh, rain, uh, Rangers would come to town and the Leafs would lay a beating on them. And I had to go to school on Monday morning and run the gauntlet of people making fun of me because the Rangers lost and the Leafs. Who was your favorite hockey player? And Andy Bathgate back then. And he was on the Rangers. Did you own an Andy Bathgate sweater? I had a sweater, but they didn't put the names on them in those days. And why did you like the Rangers? I've still got that Ranger sweater. Why did you like the Rangers? I think I liked the color of their uniforms. When did they last win the Stanley Cup back then? Uh, back in the 40s, before I was born. Even. So you would have had to wait till 1994 for but, a cup. Yeah, but I, I switched allegiances in grade 10. And did you hate Montreal before you became a fan? Yeah, it was like they were like the New York Yankees. They won all the time, so I found them really uh, a pain in the ass. But uh, the Leaf fans that made fun of me in Toronto made me really mad. And I decided I would change teams and find a team that could beat the Leafs. And, of course, Montreal, I think, won four Stanley Cups in a row. So I said, fine, from now on, I'm a Montreal fan. So you don't ever feel like going back to the Rangers as a fan? No, no, no interest. No interest? No interest, no, no. And were you a, you were a Dodgers fan? What happened when Brooklyn ended? <coughs> COVID. I wasn't much of a Dodger fan after they left Brooklyn. I, I didn't did you like try to be a Dodger fan? What? Did you try to be a Dodgers fan? Yeah, I did try. Uh, it was a different bunch of players, and 
Um, it, was, it wasn't the players so much. It was just the fact that they were going to California, which to me was uh, another universe. And, so is that why you were a Rangers fan? Because you were Brooklyn and that's New York? Yeah, something to do with it, I think. Yeah. So you you didn't weren't excited by anything but Los Angeles. Los Angeles, L.A. Dodgers. Like I said, I did root for them for a couple so years. So when L.A. won the World Series in '89, was it? Did were you? Oh, a, by that time, I was well past. Them. You didn't care. No, it, um, I cheered for them at '59 when they beat the White Sox. But R Roy Campanella was my favorite player, and uh, he got hurt when the team moved west. He was injured in a car accident, and he. Uh, he severed his spine, and he was in a wheelchair for, for the rest of his life. His career was over, um, and everything just, just like that, you know. And that coupled with the move to L.A., I started to lose interest. I cheered a couple of years, and then I, and then the Expos came along. And by that time, I was an Expos fan. Did you, know? you, you ever consider writing a song about Campanella? Yeah, I did write one about him. Yeah. Oh, um, well, so who is one of the Players like who was one of the longest players that played for Brooklyn that stuck around with the LA Dodgers? Uh, Duke Snyder, yeah, I, I, Gil Hodges, I think Duke Snyder, maybe, um, uh, Junior Gilliam, Ooh, Jackie Robbins. No, Jackie was retired by that time, he didn't hit the majors till he was in his 30s, he's in the, the Negro Leagues. He just wasn't good enough to crack the majors. No, he was plenty good enough. It was, uh, they had no non-white players or no no black players playing in the major leagues. Till, and Branch Rickey, who was the general manager of the, of the Brooklyn Dodgers, wanted to to in integrate baseball, and he chose Jackie Robinson to do it because he figured Jackie not only had the skill set, but he also had the, the character to be able to handle all the abuse he was going to get from the rednecks and uh, he did yeah. but he, by, by that time he was a more mature guy if you had taken a young fellow at 20 you'd probably destroy him you know so people were racists back then a lot of people still are they're just hiding what's that they're just hiding yeah well I mean you know there's tons of black stars in the major league baseball now and uh, black and latin american and, uh, what kind of game would it be if they didn't play in the majors? Well, it's still a good game, but it's much better with these players in there because uh, other back in the day they played in the, the Negro leagues, and some of those guys could have been superstars in Major League Baseball, but they never got a chance to play. You know, they had to play with the uh, the Negro League teams. Do you think which, they'll ever go back to Negro leagues? No. So many of the players are half and half anyway these days. You know, there's a lot of intermarriage. They'll probably have something for like white people, like the Negro Leagues. No, I don't think so. I think those days are up. <laughs> well, the whites won't be good enough to play in the majors soon. They keep taking Cuban and Dominican Republic players. Well, yeah, but Americans won't be good enough because it's not just uh, white Americans. It's Americans in general. They're, there's... Um, uh, it's almost 50% Spanish. In the How many British baseball players are there? From Britain? Yeah. Well, there might be a few that were born there, but they're not. I don't recall anybody coming, How can, learning their baseball. How come people in Britain majors? can't become superstars? How, how do they become How come Britain players, British players, can't become superstars? Because they don't have the, they don't like baseball. They, they play cricket. They, they... There's not a really how come Australians high, high level how come Australians baseball can't be superstar well, baseball players? Well, there are Australian ball players. <coughs> they have a, a professional league in Australia, and there are major league. How come there's no Australia. superstars from Finland? They're not into baseball. They're just not into it. Do you think it might have more to do with their genetics because they're not black? No, it might have more to do with uh, the climate. Because to me, it seems like the only reason to hold black people back is that they're way better than whites. So that's why they would have had Negro Leagues, to keep them from taking the positions. But like NBA, the well, black, blacks are much better at basketball. They don't dominate baseball the way they dominate basketball. Like, well, that's of, more of a, a height, of, that's of more of a height there, thing, right? You know? <coughs> it's not racist. Yeah, it's not even height. I mean, yeah. But it is height. You, you have need, to have more you, than height to play basketball. You need to have skill. You know, 
Mm. And there, there are guys that white players that excel in basketball, but on the average, uh, it's let's face it, it's black man sport. Uh, baseball, on the other hand, is open. Uh, you get black players, you get white players that are stars, you get Latin Americans who might be either or or a mixture, you know. Right. So it, and a lot of Japanese and Korean players. So uh, actually, baseball is fairly inter, inter, international game, but countries like Finland that. You know, generally they're not into it. I mean, there might be individual people that might follow it. Today you can get any sport on your television. You know, but... We gotta get back to uh, our conversation. You probably want to delete that. It's, it's really.